Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I want to show you how to install Recall Box on your Raspberry Pi and load ROMs from a USB drive. This is very simple. If you're just starting out with retro gaming on your Raspberry Pi, I do recommend using Recall Box for the first time. Then, after you get used to it, definitely go ahead and get RetroPi. I have tons of tutorials. There's just so much more that you can do with it. And in my opinion, it is a lot more stable. So first thing you're gonna need is a SD card and it needs to be formatted FAT32. This is a SanDisk 16 gigabyte SD card. It's the orange ones, they're very cheap. They're like $6 from Walmart or Amazon. And it's fully formatted FAT32. I just renamed it SD16 so I could see it easily in here. If you wanna run your games from a USB drive, you're gonna need a USB drive, obviously. And this one here is a SanDisk 32 gigabyte USB 2.0 drive, and it works perfectly for my needs. Right click, properties, it needs to be formatted FAT32 also. This is a totally clean USB drive, but if you already have a USB drive with stuff on it, and it's already formatted FAT32, it will work for you. So let's go ahead and get the recall box installation files. This is a lot easier for your first time use than RetroPie. I will leave links in the description for you. This is the Recall Box website. You can read through this. There is tons of information in here, but I'll also leave the link to the download page. This is Recall Box OS 4.0. We're gonna go ahead and download Recall Box OS 4.0.0 zip. It could change in the future when they release something else, but it should be on this page. So while this is downloading, let's go ahead and get SD card formatter. Now you're not gonna need to use this unless you wanna wipe your SD card completely. What this will allow us to do is bring that SD card back to the stock capacity, because after we install Recall Box and we try to plug it into another device, it will not show up as the correct capacity. The 16 gigabyte card is only gonna show up as 200 megabytes. And you might think, oh God, my card's corrupted now. It is not corrupted. Windows just cannot see the EXT4 format that Recall Box formats your SD card to. SD card formatter will allow you to bring it back. With all that downloaded, I have mine placed on my desktop for easy access. You can put it anywhere as long as you know where it is. We're gonna right click and extract. Now I'm using WinRAR to extract it. You can also use 7-Zip, links are in the description. It's extracting to this folder here. I'm just gonna open it up and I'll snap it to the side here. So we have some files and folders inside of here. All we need to do is open up our SD card and I'm just gonna open in a new window, snap it over here, take everything from that extracted recall box OS folder and drag it to my SD card. All right guys, so now that everything from our extracted folder is on our SD card, all we need to do is take our SD card out of our PC place it into our Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna plug in a USB controller, my ethernet, and my HDMI. Then we'll power it up. So if you get this error, error resizing existing fat partition, the only way I've found to fix it is to unplug your Pi, take the SD card out and rename it. Put it back in your PC and rename the SD card to boot. You can rename it to anything you'd like, but I always use B-O-O-T. Now I found this happens a lot with my cheap USB card reader. I don't know what the deal is. And if I tried to rename it before I even got this error, I would still get this error. So I always have to boot up. If I receive this error, I'll just rename the SD card, plug it back in, and you'll be good to go. So now it should resize the fat partition if you receive that error, just rename it. It's gonna automatically install recall box for us. And when it gets to 100%, it will automatically reboot the system and boot us into the recall box OS. From there, we'll need to set up our controller. We're gonna add some ROMs to a USB stick and start playing some awesome retro games. Sit back and relax. This could take a little bit. All right, recall box is now installed. We need to set up our controller. So go ahead and plug in your controller or turn it on. If you hold your A button, we can configure your input. 
Now, one thing that I've noticed with the new recall box is after we set our ROMs directory to our USB, we'll have to do this all over again, set up our input. It's not really a big deal. It goes very quickly. Hold your A button. I'm using a Razer Serval controller. This is your D-pad. This is your left joystick. This is your right joystick. And so on and so on. And I accidentally missed R2. It's very easy to go back if you'd like to. Your hotkey preferably would be a button that you're not using. But if you have a controller with limited buttons, you can use another button because the hotkey is only activated when you hold start and the hotkey at the same time. So I'm going to use my home button on my servo controller. Press OK. And you're now ready to play some games. So there are some pre-installed games, some actually pretty fun stuff on here already. But I want to put some awesome retro classics on here. So what I'm going to do is just show you the menu really quick. Press start. We have Cody Media Center. This is 15.1, but it works great. System settings, game settings, controller settings, UI, sound settings, network settings, scraper, and quit. If you want to connect to your Wi-Fi, enter network settings. Now I'm connected with Ethernet, it's just much easier for me. Enable Wi-Fi. This Wi-Fi SSID, you'll need a keyboard to enter this. This will be the Wi-Fi name, the Wi-Fi hotspot name. This will be your password. But I'm connected with Ethernet, it's just so much easier. Press back. Sound settings, I'm gonna turn the menu music off. So let's go ahead and get our USB drive set up so we can put some ROMs on it. We're gonna run our games directly from the USB so it will not clutter up our SD card. Grab your USB drive that you have formatted FAT32, plug it into the Raspberry Pi, scroll to system settings, and from here we have our storage device. This is gonna be our ROMs location and BIOS location. It's preset to internal. There's my USB drive, or we could use any external. I'm going to focus on my 32 gigabyte USB drive, so I'm going to leave it there. Scroll down to back. We'll have to reboot the system. It'll do it automatically when we hit OK. What Recallbox is going to do is make a folder on that USB drive automatically. Inside of that folder, we will have several different directories. We'll have ROMs, BIOSes, system, movies, music, a bunch of little folders in there. And I'll show you what does what when we move back to the PC. So reboot the system once. So it's time to put some ROMs on our USB drive. We need to move back over to the PC. Make sure you have some ROMs. We're going to take that USB stick out of the Raspberry Pi, place it into our PC, and I'll show you what kind of folders were created automatically by Recall Box. Let's move over there now. Okay, let's open up our USB drive, USB 32. It created a Recall Box folder inside of here for us. Open it up. BIOS, Cheats, Extractions, Kodi, Music, ROM, Save, Screenshot, System. I'm going to be focusing on my ROMs folder here. Open it up. And inside of here, we have all the ROMs folder for our corresponding emulator. So if you want FBA games, put your FBA games here. If you want Game Boy Color, put your Game Boy Color games here. And so on and so on. So I have a ROMs folder on my computer. So on the left here are my ROMs. On the right here is the USB drive that I'm going to be putting back into the Raspberry Pi. I'm just gonna add a few FBA games. So I'll find my FBA ROMs over here on my PC and I'll just transfer a few. If you want Neo Geo games running in FBA, you will need the Neo Geo BIOS in the FBA ROMs folder also. So I'll just put a few over here. I'm going to back up on my ROMs folder and find my SNES games. I will find my SNES folder on my USB drive. And I'll throw a few ROMs over that way. We'll do Shaq Fu and Joe and Mac. So that's it. Now it's time to go back to the Raspberry Pi, plug in our USB stick. We're going to reload the games list and we'll be able to play those games from the USB drive. Okay, so now we're back here. As you see, Super Nintendo only has one game available, and I don't have an FBA logo yet. That's because we need to plug in our USB stick. 
So I'm going to plug it in now. I'm going to press start on my controller. Now sometimes if you go to game settings and update games list it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Recall box does have a few bugs and this time it didn't work so we're going to need to do a full reboot. Press start. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. Quit. Restart system. Yes. Now after we restart we may have to set up our controller again. Another bug within recall box. It's no big deal. Press yes. So now I'm going to have to set up my controller because it's not working. I hate this the way it works, but this is how it is right now. But as you see, Super Nintendo now has two extra games. Press A on your controller to configure input. Just go through the motions again. Now that your controller's set up again, just press start on your controller. Go to controller settings and set your default to your default controller. Whatever controller you want as player one, set it here. Press back. Now if we enter Super Nintendo, we can see we have Shaq Fu and Joe and Mac. And if we go over, we should have an FBA logo. Here we are. Four games available, Blazing Star, Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, Metal Slug 4, and our Neo Geo BIOS. You won't select your Neo Geo BIOS, it's just here because that's where the BIOS needs to be. So that's it. Very easy to do. You're ready to play some games. If you want to set up another controller, you can do so, and it's super simple. But the thing is, if you have two of the same controllers, like let's just say two of the same brand USB SNES controllers, Recall Box cannot determine which controller is which because they use the same device IDs. So I'm going to plug in a Xbox 360 wired controller. Press start on my first player, Razer controller. Go to controller settings. Configure a controller. Now it's detected two game pads. If I hold A on my Xbox, I'm just going to set it up really quick. So now that I have a second player set up, you want to go to input player two and choose the second player controller. So now when we start a game, it will know that player two uses the Xbox controller and player one uses my Razer controller. Go back. And let's start a two-player game really quick. Let's go to Metal Slug 4. So I'm going to insert some coins by pressing select on my first player controller. So I got three coins now. I'll press start on my first player. And if I press start on my second player, we have P2, which is player two. And I'll select Nadia with player two and Marco with player one. Now this is going to be near impossible to play this game with both controllers in my lap here. With, but player one, jump. Got some grenades here somewhere. There we are. Player two, using Nadia. Grenades, shoot, jump. So I'm going to try to walk through here with both controllers. And I'm definitely, definitely going to die. To exit a game, you need to hold start and press your hot key. And that's pretty much it. You're done for now. If you want to add game art, press start on your controller. And you need to make sure you are connected to the internet. So I'm connected with Ethernet, and I'm going to scroll down to Scraper. I'm going to scrape from the game's DB. Scrape now. And I only want to scrape one system for now just to make it quick. And still, it's not going to be that quick. This takes forever to scrape. Go back. So I'm only going to scrape FBA. I'll go back, and I'll start the scrape. And like I said, this does take a long time. I'm trying to figure out a way to use a different scraper within recall box because this is ridiculous the amount of time it takes to scrape just one image and it might seem like it's frozen but it's not so here we are at the top under scraping in progress we see FBA game one of four blaze star dot zip this is blazing star and I want to download that image the next one is dino dot zip that's Cadillacs and dinosaurs and hopefully it'll find an image for me so it didn't find it, which is kind of odd. We'll just skip that one. 
mslug4.zip. It found it, so I'm gonna download that image. And this is just my BIOS, so I'm not even gonna worry about this. I'll go to stop after it's done working. When we enter our FBA menu, we'll see some game art for those two games I was able to scrape. So I'll just scroll down to stop. Two games successfully scraped, one skipped, press OK. Now we have game art for Metal Slug 4. It didn't find Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, unfortunately, and game art for Blazing Star. We also have some metadata that tells us about the game. So that's it for now, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments. But real quick, the new release of Recall Box still doesn't use the internal Bluetooth on the Pi 3, so you will need a dongle to connect your Bluetooth controllers. It's a little bit of a pain, and I was hoping it'd be fixed in this release, but it hasn't. Setting up two controllers that have the same device ID is possible. The problem is I don't own two of the same exact controllers, so I cannot figure out how to do it. There's no way for me to even test it. And finally, when using games from your USB drive, they're going to stay on your USB drive. So you need to keep it plugged in. I can make a tutorial on how to load games to the SD card if you'd like. It's very, very simple. There is a great feature built into Recall Box. You can access the file system from a browser like Chrome. You can see the temperature, your configuration file, your ROMs, your BIOSes, everything. It's a really nice setup. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys.